Namaste. I want to say thank you very much to IIMC for this opportunity and also for the university for inviting us. I'm not only here to present, but I'm also here to learn. So when the Vice Chancellor was speaking about the fact that child rights is all captured in one message, that is love. I just love it because when you love, then I think every other thing continues. Um, so as you see on screen, I'm from Ghana, West Africa, and uh, we are bordered on the west side by Cote d'Ivoire, there's Togo on the left, and then there's Burkina Faso on the top of it. And then the announcer, when we were starting up, took a quotation from the former UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan. He said that uh, um, everybody was once a child. And so child rights is indeed a very important topic for all of us. So I'm going to trace it from the pre-colonial days to the present state of child rights in my country, Ghana. All right, so this is a broad headline. Children have always occupied a special position in Ghanaian society because we consider them as custodians of the future. So when a child is born, there's a big party and everybody gets together. The naming ceremony is very elaborate. In the pre-colonial days, children were the most precious of one's possession, and that's from a direct quotation from Jachi in 1996. Community members were also committed to the welfare of children because they believed, and this is a very important quotation, that it took a village to raise a child. So the act of child or looking after the children was a whole village's responsibility, not just an individual. The advantage of the foster system for children was that they always had more than two adults whom they could depend on. Of course, there will be advantages and disadvantages because some parents were irresponsible, thinking the society would take care of the child and not perform their duties. The kinship foster care was also based on the values of reciprocity, altruism, that is self, uh, selflessness, and then the fear of reprisal from dead kinsmen. This is a direct quotation from my research. They believe that the spirit of the dead parent, particularly that of the mother, is watching to see how the child is being treated. And they will reward with misfortune and calamities those foster parents who neglect their child. These are just, you know, beliefs. The advent of colonial rule saw the beginning of modern cities and industrialization in Ghana. And the rural urban drift weakened the extended family system, contributing to a breakdown of families. Children's rights as it is known today was largely absent during the pre-colonial era. Children were considered properties of their parents and the lineage rather than individuals with their rights and entitlements. After Ghana gained independence from the British in 1957, the government introduced right, so the government introduced the Education Act of 1961. Uh, there were other acts which were enacted over the period, and Ghana eventually signed and ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child on the 29th of January 1990. Now, of course, the framework ensures minimum standards for the rights to which a child is entitled and abiding by a minimum standard by, for a child's well-being. Now, domestically, there are laws in Ghana. They've been enacted, we know there are laws. But of course, there are issues with implementation. Just moving the uh, presentation quickly. Due to the renewed interest in protecting the rights of the child in the past two decades in Ghana, the Ministry of Gender and Women and Children's Affairs was established in 2001 to take the lead and coordinate gender and child receptive development issues in my country. And then there's been some positives because constitutionally, our constitution provides for teaching free, compulsory, and universal basic education for all children from kindergarten through to the high school in Ghana. In September 27, the government began facing a program to provide teaching free enrollment in senior high schools, beginning with first year students. And that has been going on. There are issues. The Child Marriage Unit of the Domestic Violence Secretariat of the Ministry of Gender and Women's Affairs continues to lead government effort to combat child marriage in my country, and there are rights violations. While Ghana has been at the forefront of the push to formally adopt child rights, not only introducing the legislation to enforce the rights, but incorporating them into the Ghana constitution, the country has struggled to enforce them at the grassroots level. There are issues with corporal punishment, 
There are issues with sexual abuse in schools. There are issues with early marriage. There are issues with female genital mutilation, child labor. And these are some of the suggestions we come up with with this research. We need to strengthen community structures, early intervention through social protection, improve child and family welfare services, alternative care, and uh, what have you. These are just photos of children from my country, um, you know, about performing a traditional dance. And this is normally how they do it, from the Kurobo people in Ghana. These are kids from the school system at the kindergarten level. And these are some of the issues on the streets. Children, 10 years, 15 years, carrying heavy loads, um, you know, as a means to survive. And we also have, at times, they, they give it very early, so we carry their kids well while they're doing this. There's been some interventions to register them with the National Health Insurance. It's a way of helping the kids out. About 5,000 of them were done at just at a go. And these are the references that I brought up with. My name is Erasmus Kwa, Diploma in Journalism student at IIMC. Thank you very much for this opportunity.